Hi everybody, Mr. Record here with another video covering topic 3.3, example 5. Digging in a little bit deeper to the derivative of an inverse using this really handy shortcut formula that was introduced to you back a video ago. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we've got here. In my notes, uh, once I got to topic uh, 3.3 and got about two thirds of the way through, we started to talk about this really wonderful formula uh, that I refer to as method three, but it's really the main driving formula that a lot of students around the country will learn whenever they're trying to take the derivative of really any inverse function. And we already worked through example four, so we're going to go ahead and dive into the final example uh, that uses this formula with a given function f of x before I tie up this video series with uh, an example that deals with a chart. So in example five, it says find the derivative of the inverse function of f of x equal one quarter x cubed plus x minus one at x equal three. And we're going to use this formula above. So I may do a little scrolling back and forth so that uh, we don't forget this particular guy. Now, what I suggested that we do from the very beginning is let's go ahead and enter the world of the inverse. It's kind of important because we're taking the derivative of an inverse, so we need to be in that inverse world first. And it's really easy to enter that world because all you've got to do is just flip-flop your x's for your y's. And so we'll make that happen. Not too terribly difficult to do that. And boom, we're now in the world of the inverse. Now, doesn't matter what order you do things. We are going to have to take the derivative of this function. We're going to have to actually rewrite the structure of the formula, but we're also going to have to solve an equation. So what we can do is we could actually set up that formula first of all. So in other words, we're going to revisit this guy, f inverse of um, prime of x. So what we could do is just physically get the ball rolling and write that, f inverse prime of our x would be 1 over, and then for the derivative of that function f. Well, notice here is the function f. We can take his derivative pretty easily, but what I want us to do is to take that derivative where y is our variable, because we're in that inverse world. So essentially, you're going to take the derivative of this highlighted function right here, and you actually you can do it with respect to y. In other words, you don't have to do any fancy maneuvering with your implicit differentiation notation. You can just express this as a function of y temporarily. And so what we're going to do is take that derivative, and of course we would get 3 fourths y squared plus 1 minus 0. And as I said before, I know this looks a little strange. It's like, okay, we were anticipating some inverse functions derivative at x, but that's okay because we still want to plug in this x equal 3 for this particular variable, but that's going to manifest itself in a completely different value for the y. And that's where we need to go next. We need to take this particular equation in the inverse world and solve it for the variable y when the x is equal to 3. So here's what we're looking at. All right, so how do we solve this? Hmm, easier said than done, right? Well, because we don't see any calculator icon here, this is a non-calculator question, we would be expected to be able to solve this equation. And typically the way that we could do this is a trial and error approach. If you're really on top of your synthetic division game, you could certainly do that, but you don't have to. All you've got to do is just try some values for y. You probably aren't going to have to look very far until you get one that works. So let's, uh, you know, let's kind of play... Um, kind of like in the dark here, and let's just try y equals zero. I'm pretty sure that's not going to work because you're going to get three is equal to negative one, which is, you know, thanks for playing, right? So maybe we try uh, y equal one. I don't have a lot of optimism about y equal one because I just don't see how we're going to shake that fractional value there from the right side. So that's, you know, that's not going to work because three is not equal to one fourth. Okay, we probably start to run out of patience here. Let's go ahead and try y equal 2. y equal 2 has some promise. The reason why I say that is because the 
the uh, cubic there is going to help a bit. Let's see what we have. We have 2 to the third power, which is 8. 8 divided by 4 is going to be a 2. Again, y is going to be 2. And by the time we subtract 1, hey, we have a winner here. So we know that the answer to this equation is indeed y equal to 2. Typically, I tell my students, if it's a non-calculator problem, 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2 at worst, you're going to find a solution very, very close to that value of zero somewhere. Okay, so at this point, we can actually answer our problem, right? We can go ahead and proclaim that, okay, we're setting to find the inverse's derivative when x is 3. And upon doing that, we have discovered that the y value is actually going to be 2 in that particular instance. And then we just simply simplify this. You wouldn't even have to simplify this as if this were a free response question, but typically these problems are found on the multiple choice section of the AP exam. And in any event, I'm going to get 1 over 3 plus 1, which is 1 over 4, and that will be my answer. So we've actually used this formula to streamline the process to take the derivative of an inverse. In my final video coming up, what we're going to do is use the same idea and I'll preview that here by giving you a table of values. And what that'll do is it'll force you to have to use that formula. Whereas in my previous two videos where I was using this example four and example five, we could have used our method two, which was outlined in a previous video about using implicit differentiation. But when you've got a table of values, that option's off the table. So I definitely encourage you to stick around for that video coming up and uh, we'll see you next time.